Hello again fellow coders, welcome to this next video in our series where we are learning how to create a fully functional web application using Java, uh, building it from scratch and leveraging Spring Boot. So in this video, uh, we, we last left off um, with the login, the custom login page that we had built, but the login page, when we, when we tried to log in, it would give us an error saying there is no password encoder. Um, so we need to create a password encoder, right? Uh, obviously, that's what it's getting at. So how do we do that? Well, uh, we should be able to uh, create our own bean inside of our uh, web security configuration file. So we can annotate uh, an actual, uh, we can create a bean right directly inside of our configuration method uh, by annotating it with at bean. And all this needs to do is return an object, uh, a Java object, because any real Java object could be referred to as a bean. They're kind of synonymous. So uh, what, is the, what is the object that we're returning? Well, believe it or not, there's something called a password encoder that comes from Spring Framework Security, right? It's built into Spring Security. So I can return a password encoder, right? We'll call this get uh, password encoder, right? So this method that returns an object can actually be a bean. It's kind of one way to hack it. So instead of actually creating a password encoder class, you can just annotate it with at, at bean and it kind of creates a pseudo class or how, I don't know how, what it does in the background, but it makes it work properly. Um, so we can then uh, import that annotation and then we actually have to have it return a password encoder. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can return something called a bcrypt password encoder. Okay, again, this comes from Spring Security. Uh, a bcrypt password encoder uh, is a type of password encoder. Okay, um, the method, is undefined change to get password encoder what no oh return new jeez trevor i you're returning a new instance of a bcrypt password encoder i don't that i had a brain fart there so um that's the bcrypt password encoder if i hit f4 uh you can see um well if i sorry if i go into it you can see it implements password encoder right so password encoder is what we're returning, the type that we're returning here. So um, yeah, that's how you create the bean, but then we need to make use of this bean, right? So how do we do that? Well, we should be able to, uh, inside of the in-memory authentication, we should be able to say uh, password encoder. We can specify a password encoder and say, get the password encoder from this uh, config file. So we can actually just get it right there and then, um, which, you don't need to use the, the at bean annotation to make this work, but the reason why we say at bean is because if we want to be able to use a password encoder in any other file, like for example, in, in the dashboard controller, I don't know why you do this, but uh, maybe inside of this controller, you'd need to use the password encoder. So you can at auto wired um, the uh, password encoder, password encoder, right? Um, and then that, that would work. You can auto wire it in and you'd actually be able to get access to the password encoder because it would be managed by Spring Security because it is declared as a bean in this configuration file, okay? If I did not have this annotated as a bean, uh, then the uh, code I wrote over here to auto wire, it wouldn't be able to find this because it wouldn't be managed. I don't believe it would be managed by Spring Security. So that's why we do at bean, just to give you an example. Um, it allows us to, to get access to it outside of this um, file. So it's just typically you end up needing to do that anyway. That's why I just know at some point I'm going to need to be able to get the password encoder uh, to encrypt the password elsewhere at some point. So, all right, let me delete this auto wired because we don't need to auto wire it in here. When we do need to auto wire it in to another controller or service or something, we will, we will get there. We will cross that bridge when we get there. So now that we have uh, specified a password encoder into our um, authentication manager builder, uh, we can now reboot our server and hopefully we will be able to start the process of logging in. The only problem I foresee is that this password is not encoded. So it might not work, uh, but we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and go to our login page and try to log in. Okay, failed to log in. Uh, does it tell us why we failed to log in? Well, like I said, I'm pretty sure I have an idea as to why it's failing to log in. Uh, and that's because this is not an encoded password. So because we're using a password encoder, we need to make sure that this is encoded. So one way to do that is we can um, say get password encoder dot encode this text. 
right? So we're encoding ASDF, ASDF. So it'll encode it and place it in as the password. Okay, so now let me refresh. And, um, oh, I guess I was typing in the wrong password anyway. Sorry. I need to type in ASDF, ASDF, and then say login, and then it works, right? Um, okay, my bad. So I wonder if, I'm pretty sure this would have failed. If I, let me undo my code. Let me go back to just having ASDF, ASDF, uh, and reboot the server. I believe this would have failed anyway, had I, had I typed in the correct password. So if I try to go to, I don't know, slash dashboard, it'll say, um, oh, I guess I'm, is it because I'm already logged in? If I say log out, there we go. And now if I say go to dashboard, yeah, it'll ask me to log in. So if I type in the correct password, ASDF, ASDF, and say log in, uh, it still says fail to log in. And there we go. Even though I typed in the right password, it's failing. And you're saying, why? I typed in the right password. Well, like I said, it's because you're not encoding that password. You always need to make sure you encode the password um, for that user. And then once you've encoded it, then it's going to decode it properly. So now when I say log in, uh, it should allow me to log in and, you know, trying to go to slash dashboard and sure enough, it can't find slash dashboard because it doesn't yet exist. Okay. So the next step is to really create some sort of page, you know, we, we can probably do that. We can get away with using some time to create a, uh, a little page. We can put it in the dashboard controller, have a get mapping for slash dashboard and have this return a view. We'll call this, you know, dashboard will be the name of the controller and it'll return a dashboard view, which we will then need to create as an in, as a, um, an HTML file. So in the templates folder in source main resources, we will create a new file called dashboard.html because the dashboard needs to match the view name. And then we can create a new um, HTML file with a title that says fresh votes dashboard. And the body is, you know, I don't know, fresh votes dashboard. Again, very simple views here that we're creating just so that we can do it really quickly. Uh, so now if I try to go to dashboard, there it is, fresh votes. But that dashboard is allowing me to get there. Um, and uh, and we can, you know what, just for the sake of, of playing around, let's also, because I have the luxury of time right now, let's also add a, um, a logout button. Or uh, I guess it's not a button, that's a... Well, can we create a button that works like an H? Uh, maybe. Can I say class? No, then I need to bring in Bootstrap. Anyway, let's keep it simple. Uh, we'll have a, a logout link that when you click on it, it logs out, right? So if I say log out, uh, it'll log me out. And then if I try to re-access the dashboard page, it's saying, nope, you need to log in first. If I give it an incorrect password, you see it fails to log in. If I type in another incorrect password, it fails to log in. If I type in the correct password, uh, well, wait, correct password with an incorrect username, it fails to log in. If I type in the correct password and a correct username, then it allows me to see the fresh votes dashboard, which is, it just by default becomes a protected URL because of our setup in web security configuration. We said only permit everyone in the, um, oh, I guess this is redundant. Uh, we have a, sorry, p permit everyone to see the root and permit everyone to see the login page, uh, but every, everything else, any other request, they have to be a u they have to have a user role, which is why we have a role of user here. Um, this person has a user role, therefore they are allowed to see and well any other page, right? What I'm saying is redundant is we have a slash login permit all here, and then we have a login page permit all here. So those both do the same thing. So I can actually delete this line from my configuration file and now it'll still work. We'll still be permitted to see the login page because we have a permit all down here. All right, so just to prove that that's true, there it is. We can see the login page. Um, you know, if we try to see the login page, it lets us see it. We have no issue seeing the login page and it still functions um, as we would expect. Although, oh, that went to the, I was like, where did the logout button go? Uh, we went to the, we didn't go to the right URL there. We went to the home page as opposed to slash dashboard. Okay, cool. So there you go. Um, if you uh, don't care about learning about uh, GitHub related stuff, you can stop watching this video. Um, but for those of you who wanna, again, see me check in the code that I just did and create the branches and all that stuff, stick around, I will do that now. Uh, but I will thank you anyway, if you watch this video, uh, thank you for taking the time to learn 
Um, and I've been forgetting to say, hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. Everyone says that on the YouTube uh, and all the big YouTubers out there, uh, they always say that. And there's probably a reason why they are big YouTubers and they say that is because people sometimes need a gentle reminder to like the video and subscribe. So this is me sending the gentle reminder. Don't forget to like and subscribe to YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're not watching this on YouTube, what are you doing? Check out my YouTube channel, yo. Um, you can just type in fresh votes to search for, for any of these videos on YouTube and you should be able to find them. Cool. So let's uh, go ahead and talk uh, code changes, or not code, uh, what is this called? Uh, source tree uh, via GitHub. So let's, uh, let's look at our working copy. We have the, the files that we have just made changes to. Okay, dashboard was created, dashboard controller was uh, appended to, and the web security configuration has some changes appended to it. So we'll stage all of our changes, and then we'll check them in. So we'll call this check-in, uh, what should we say? Uh, uh, adding password encoder, I guess is essentially what we did. Uh, we'll check this into our master branch. So now our master branch will become up to date. Uh, with the latest and greatest. We can click on master to see that. So we see master is ahead of any other branch. We have a whole bunch of other branches, but master is ahead. So now let's create a new branch so that if you want at any point in time, you can go right to this branch, uh, right to these specific changes that I made. If you want to follow along, I will create a fresh votes 007, and then I'll paste in adding password encoder. And I'll keep it lowercase because I think that's what I've been doing. And I'll say create the branch. So then it'll create fresh votes 007. We'll push those changes so that we're actually pushed uh, and committed to the interwebs. And then there we go. We have now, well, once this finishes, finishes pushing, there we go. And now we have our uh, fresh votes uh, branch 007 in GitHub. So that it's publicly available. And you can go ahead and check it out yourself. Okay, switch back to master and we are good to go for the next video. So thanks for joining again. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to this uh, video slash channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. As always, take care of yourself. Happy coding, happy learning, and bye for now.